See the difference? One screams, I just discovered Lutz today, and the other one belongs in the theater. Same footage, completely different results. Today I wanna to talk about three dead giveaways that your grades look fake as hell. And if you're a beginner, there's around 90% chance that you're either doing all of the stuff that I'm gonna be showing here, or at least one of the three things. And of course, I'm not gonna just point out what you're doing wrong. I'm gonna show you how I would go about fixing it as a professional. And if you're sick and tired of jumping from tutorial to tutorial without really any direction, I have an absolutely free training. It's around one hour long that will transform the way you grade. Link to that is gonna be in the description below. Check it out after you finish watching this video. For those that don't know me, my name is Kazi. I've worked with brands like Adidas, Amazon Prime, Universal Studios, and I make no just straightforward color grading tutorials so you can work with your dream clients. All right, so we're inside Resolve and we're gonna start off with this shot. I got it from Artlist, if you guys wanna download and practice with. And what's happening here is pretty simple. I'm taking my footage from Red to DaVinci Wide Gamut and DaVinci Wide Gamut to Rec. 709. And then we're just gonna be focusing on the tasks that we're attacking here, okay? So we created this very extreme look. One of the things that, let's just say a beginner would do is trying too hard to isolate the skin. If I go in this node right here and drop on a DCTL called QT charts, and if I were to turn on skin hue indicator, this gets to tell us where our skin is sitting. And it clearly is telling us the skin is way too green. It's just gone, it's, it's too far. So then what a beginner would do is they would, let's just say they created a look like this, using parallel mixer, they'll go in the node above it, they'll try to key out the skin. There's nothing wrong with this part of the equation. So first of all, like just a quick tip, when everything in your screen is like this, like a similar color, a similar hue, the best way to pull qualifier is to actually use it in black and white, okay? So when you go in this mode, now I can just like really start tightening it up to something like this right? Like I can go further than that, like to something like this. And now I can use my center point and move it to something like this. Symmetry, very helpful, like as you can see, like that. And then what can I do? Can I pull this down? Yep, this helps. And then just go under denoise and like really just denoise it so everything blends in good. And now if I just come out of it, uh, that's a pretty good selection. You guys will see, like now we can just take the footage anywhere and nothing will crack. Like, I mean, we can hold it here and if I play it through, like see, there's like no artifacting, okay? So now what the beginner would do is they would just be like, okay, we got to pull the skin tones out, right? So let's just give them the benefit of the doubt that they're using all the right parameters. So gamma would be the best one to attack that and then they'll just like start going somewhere around here. And they were like, okay, I'm seeing my skin tones. They're coming close to that middle section right here. They're looking better. It's too saturated, so I'm gonna pull back the saturation. I'm gonna add contrast. And now it's looking really good. It's like coming out of like where we were, right? But this is where they go wrong, where they just start going too far, okay? Because on paper, this actually could look good. Why? If I go in here again, my QC node, and go here, Look at, we mission accomplished because we had so much green and we pulled all of that green out. But see, this is what I'm talking about. We took it too far. Everything that I show you guys, it's not based on your failures. It's based on my failures, all the mistakes that I've made. And that's what I would do. This just looks unnatural. This is too far. This is too pushed. I mean, does it look good? Sure, it does. Like, I mean, if I do before and after, I mean, this is our Rec. 709. It's pretty cool, but... We've just gone too, too, too far and it just jumps out. It looks amateur. It just looks too pushed. It's like I just started grading today. So let's go ahead and actually save this. And now I'm going to show you what I would do, what Kazi would do today as a professional to fix this. We just don't have to go that far. Let's just split the difference. It's just as simple as that. So I'm going to go in here and start pulling it back. And even if I leave it somewhere around here and come out of it, and if I do before and after, we're still making all the difference in the world. I mean, look at how crummy this was. Look at the hand right here. And now here we are. But it is so natural and how well it just blends in. And if I just play it through, it feels like part, see? It feels like part of this, right? So now if we just go and pull up this image, 
and we do right click and then match it. And if we just go here and I pull this down, get rid of this, and then we basically just do a swipe going through back and forth. You can see like how this was just, and even in the background, like it's just too much, it's too harsh. And then when we go here to our version, it's just effortless. This just blends in. And guys, I don't like to over-exaggerate results. I mean, I could have just shown you a really bad example, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to actually give you our beginner, our beginner intermediate, a benefit of the doubt that they will still know what they're doing and they had the right idea, but it's these little tweaks that are just going to make your grades look that much more professional. Moving on to our second reason. So let's just say the client wants a really warm sunset. So let's just do that. We're gonna use our lift gam again, and we are going to go there, right? So like, I mean, if I go here with my gain, this is a nice look. Now, the thing that happens with most beginner slash intermediate colorists, they'll create that and then they'll be like, dude, there's no dimension to it anymore. So then the natural thing is to go in your lift and then create some sort of like, you know, pull it down to something like that, go back in your gain and keep like pushing it and then go in your, uh, lift and pull it down a little bit and then go in your gamma and kind of correct it and then go in your lift and do something like that. And now at least there is some sort of drama. Uh, great, right? Like this looks awesome. Like, I mean, I have color separation. This is great. This is not great. You don't always have to create color separation. Like this is just not always the goal. A lot of people, they, they try to pull complementary colors out of something that there's no business having complementary colors there. You don't need to just keep doing this sort of action to create some sort of a drama. Like, you know, now I got this thing going on in the sky, right? Because if that was the thing, if I go right here and then go to this, um, this wouldn't have happened, right? Like we just wouldn't have this. Like there actually would be complementary colors. Or if I go here, there would be complementary colors. Or if I go here, there would be complementary colors. And that's not what's going on. I mean, look at the colorized waveform. It just goes there. It lives there, right? Like, I mean, there is too much red in the hair on the bottom end. I can tell. I can even show you in parade. Like the reds are lifted. See? Like, I mean, it just... That's a natural thing. Like I'm noticing it and, and the blues are choked and the greens are normal and the, the reds are lifted. I'm seeing that and I'm buying that. I mean, this is this is cool. They don't have, like it still looks cinematic. Nobody's going to say, oh, there's no complementary colors. It doesn't look cinematic. I mean, look at where it's sitting at on the vectorscope compared to what we're trying to do. When you add complementary colors where they shouldn't be, you water down your overall look. So we should save this now go and kill my lift and kill my gamma. And now if I bring the other one on, and if I do before and after, huh, huh, all of a sudden we do have like a little bit of a Blade Runner magic going on. It actually looks pretty cool. I mean, this is our beginner's version trying to just like add complementary colors. We can still neutralize a little bit of our reds, right? Like pull it down just a touch. So take our reds and pull it down a little bit like what I'm doing. And then that could be just that. We barely made any changes. And like our image just has so much more personality compared to like what we were dealing with before. I mean, like, look at this. So like water down and now we're owning it and it's looking so much better, so much better. Another way to have even more control when you're trying to create such a look is by using your custom curves, breaking the chain and then building the look right here. Because what this can help you do is like you really get to decide where you want to introduce which hue. So like this is the beauty of it. And I'm going to do it in a very general way, right? So like we can just go, I want to keep this here. I want to go in my reds and I, where do I want to add the warmth? And then where do I want to kind of control it a little bit? Right. So this is a very natural now look. The best part about this particular method is like, look at what's happening to our vector scope. Our anchors are locked in. Why? Because look at this point. We're not messing with this point right here. So it's always going to stay put. See, so this is looking so natural, yet we're creating a lot of warmth. It might not have the same effect of like lift gamma again, like how we can just take everything into one space. But at the same time, it's way more natural. Now at that point, we can use some other techniques. So like if I go right here and then 
select this. And then in this, uh, in the linear gamma, I can actually go and use my temp and tint as if I've made these changes in camera. So let's just say in my temp, I warm it up to something like that. This is way more natural. So see like here, I got to control luminance level wise, where do I want to put a certain hue, a certain color? And then I came into my balance by using linear gamma and added warmth using temperature again, as if it was done in camera, we just ended up with a very sophisticated warm look. So now if we go here and I do right click wipe and then do before and after, like just look at, this is also going to break. Like it's gonna have banding, it's gonna crack. You're just taking your image somewhere where it's not supposed to go. And like I said, it just makes the whole thing look so watered down compared to this. And now if I go back to this balance and let's just say if I wanna go, it's too much on the magenta side. I want to add more green. So I can just add more green using my tint. If I want to add more magenta, more warmth, I can do that. I can warm it up even more. And now we're really, really, really going into that Mad Max territory, right? And now if I go on my tint and if I add that or if I just like remove it and go more toward like uh, Denis Villeneuve's enemy, I can go there. Now to clean up our overall look, I will just go under my HDR palette and just in my saturation, pull it back, right? And then keep it somewhere around here. And uh, now if I do before and after, it does a much more natural job at controlling saturation, um, in, especially in problematic areas than using your YRGB primary saturation, which is just like spread evenly and just makes things look really crummy in either direction. So like you just, Look at it, like how clean this is. And now if we just bring in our reference, like look at how immature this looks, like how forced it looks, how crummy it looks. Whereas here, oh my God, this is to die for. And this is where I would leave it. So, I mean, if we just take these and if we do before and after, like it, it would never felt that this is how the actual image was. Before we keep moving, I wanna tell you that right now we're doing a flash sale on Kazi's Toolkit and Freelance Colorist only for the next few days. You can save $200 off. If you're watching this video, then you're serious about color grading. And if you like what you're seeing here, then literally take this and turn it up by 100. 30 plus hours of on-demand self-paced lessons. You have a community of over 7,800 colorists around the world that are ready to give you personalized feedback. And just look at our success stories. I mean, just think of a brand and our students are grading for them. So you could be next. And if you don't want to become a professional colorist, then Kazi's Toolkit is the answer. You've seen me use it and how it can shave hours and days and not to mention no skills required. Okay, so there's zero learning curve creating Hollywood looks in minutes with this toolkit. And people are absolutely losing their shit. I mean, just look at the screen. So you can't go wrong with either products. And if you get them both, I mean, you're saving twice as much. So link to the discount is in the description below. Check it out. Let's get back to the video. All right, so this is another example. I'm gonna pull this open and kind of show you. So again, we're going from red to DaVinci White Gamut, DaVinci White Gamut to Red Rec 709. And let's just say that uh, our buddy, um, it just cannot stop talking about this one LUT he found and it's the best thing ever and it's a one-click teal and orange and he's just going on and on and on and he hooks you up. He finally is just like, dude, I'll get you that LUT and your life will never be the same. So you got it. It's Buddy's LUT right here. It's called Buddy LUT. And I'm just going to go in this Buddy LUT node where I'm going to apply it. So I can just double click and apply it. Oh my God, he was right. I mean, look at this. This teal and orange is out of this world. It's great. It latches on. It looks great. And it's set up to work in DaVinci White Gamut. This is insane because now I can export this in HDR and everything will look perfect. So what is Kazi complaining about? Like, what's wrong? Now, let's talk about it. Let's change our scope from waveform to parade and look at what happened. I'm going to do before. I'm going to do after. How our reds and blues just got choked. And uh, I don't care. I don't care, Kazi. It, it still looks great. Like, what's your problem? The problem is this. If I were to zoom in here and show you this, you see before and after how crummy it looks and all the artifacting that's coming in right here. What about his hair? Does, should anybody's hair be just this like gunky green teal? No, it should be like this. That's natural. What's happening here? This is where most of people's grade starts to break apart. Like the initial idea was great. I like 
all the huge shifts that are happening that, that are cool. But now, what is a surgical procedure to first spot it and then go and fix this? All right, so let's go back to our tried and tested QT charts. And this time, what I want to do is something very interesting. I'm calling it look check. So this is going to help us find if there are any issues with our look. And all we have to do is just click on exposure ramp. And normally, this is used for your roll offs and like how far you're pushing your contrast. But we're going to be using it for colors. What kind of hue are we introducing at which part of our luminance? Right. So like if I were to make this full screen, this gets to tell us everything. If we turn off our buddy's light to turn it on, I mean, this is cool and the top end is pretty clean, but that's not necessarily the case on the bottom end. I mean, it's getting pretty contaminated. And that's exactly what we're seeing when we turn this off and go here again, all the same issues that we're facing, like what's happening with all of this is just getting kind of gunky, right? So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go back from full screen to row. And let's just keep it simple. Basically, we want to reverse that a little bit, right? Like it's just way too much steel and green and it's just getting crummy. So let's go in our primaries log wheels. I'm going to go under shadows and I'm going to start reversing it. So right now everything is living down here in the shadows. So let's just take it and start. I'm like just focusing on his hair. And even if I just pull it up this much and if I do before and after, I mean, it, it start to look pretty good. And then even like right here, we can see that we're getting rid of all this crumminess. But can we go a little bit further? I mean, this is looking pretty good. Let's go in full screen and look at this right between these two. So this is before this green crummy stuff. And then we lifted it up. I mean, if you look at Vectroscope, we're barely like manipulating anything. I mean, can we do a little bit more? We'll keep it easy. Like I can just take my shadows and I can just keep playing with it and just do before and after and just be like, where does it feel much better? And like right now, if I do this, like I just created so much color separation. Like look at how I made all these things come to life and like be their own thing. I mean, look at this, right? Like before, just one mush, like it's just weird. And then after it just opens up, right? Like this is before. And then it just opens up. Like, I mean, this shadow looks so much more natural than this. This just looks so gunky and weird. Same thing again, like right here. Like we just, like this is looking so crummy and this just pulls them out and it creates a very nice separation. Yet the whole look still stays intact. The DNA is still there. So what did we learn? The difference between beginner or pro looks is not expensive gear or thousand dollar LUTs. It's about knowing the fundamentals and how to solve those specific problems. So next time when you're grading, I want you to ask three questions. Are my skin tones integrated or isolated? Am I enhancing a look or forcing it? Are my anchors somewhat neutral or are they contaminated with my overall look? And if you answered these correctly, congratulations, you're on the right track. And if you found this video helpful, then please do me a favor, share it with a friend that can benefit from these exact techniques we shared here. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace, fam.